Hello everyone! My name is Val and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'll share 10 practical approaches to enhance dialogue skills in the classroom. The ability to engage in dialogue and conversation is crucial for any language learner and as educators it's our job to facilitate this skill as best as we can. These methods are designed to not only improve the way students communicate in English, but also to make the learning process more engaging and enjoyable. We'll look into various activities from role plays to real life simulations that can help students break the ice and start talking. The goal here is to ignite a discussion on how to revive student communication and refine their English speaking skills. It's essential for students to feel comfortable and confident in their ability to express themselves. And through these practices, we aim to achieve just that. I understand that every classroom is unique with students at uh, different proficiency levels and diverse learning needs. I tried my best to cover all levels in this video, but in case I missed something, please remember that I share ideas that work well in my classes. You can adapt them to your class. Not everything that works in one class or one school or one country will work in another. This is why it's critical for us, you and me, as teachers, <laughs> to learn to adapt the ideas to our setting and environment, tailoring the approaches to meet our students' uh, specific needs. So, whether you're teaching beginners who are just starting to string sentences together or um, advanced learners looking to polish their conversational skills, there is something in this video for everyone. Before we dive into the video, please remember to like and subscribe. Your support helps me create more content like this and helps spread um, valuable teaching strategies to educators around the world. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Dialogue practice is crucial in English language learning as it enhances communication skills, expands vocabulary, and reinforces grammar in a very practical context. It builds confidence, fosters cultural understanding, and is essential for learners at all levels, providing a dynamic and effective means to apply language skills in real-life scenarios. Um, assign roles to students and have them act out a specific scenario. For example, a restaurant scene, a job interview, or a doctor's appointment. Uh, in my case, uh, here students are talking about their favorite rooms in a house. Also, I think it's a good idea to provide a list of expressions or vocabulary that students should incorporate into their dialogue. So in my example here, one student asks, which room is your favorite? The other one answers, my favorite room is my bedroom. Why? Because I can read books there. Also, you can make this dialogue more challenging by covering key expressions or key words with these red boxes. Uh, this is going to make your students think. And uh, if you see that they are struggling with these words, you can always click on the box and reveal the word 
uh, for your students. And also, uh, you understand that you can change the keywords uh, on every slide. So this is a a good idea to use as dialogue practice. Also, I have a video on my channel where you can learn how to make this type of slides, uh, how you can cover uh, keywords with these red boxes. It's in the, um, uh, I, I think I have a playlist called uh, PPT tutorials, so you can uh, look it up and learn how to make it. Here's another example. Uh, first, I'm not sure if you see this, there is a play button. So uh, when you have longer dialogues, I think it's a good idea uh, to let your students listen to the dialogue first. Of course, you can read it out to them, but if you want to save your vocal uh, cords, uh, you can pre-record it and then just play it to your students. Yeah, so something like that. What is the problem? <coughs> I am sick. I have a bad cough. Well, take this medicine twice a day, drink a lot of water, and stay in bed. <coughs> Thank you, doctor. You are welcome. So first, yeah, you model the dialogue, you show it to your students, and then turn it into a game. In this example, you invite... Uh, two students from one team and they need to say this dialogue out. So one student says, what is the matter? And the other one chooses one of these words. I am sick, I have a headache. And then you click on headache, two points. Woo well, take this medicine three times a day. Thank you, you are welcome. So you see, they get to choose different options or different choices. And in this case, this team got two and four, six, nine points. So this team won nine points. And then you invite two students from another team and then they also choose uh, any words or numbers they like and also get points. So it's a different idea to uh, practice dialogue. It's engaging because everyone likes to play. Show students a picture and ask them to create a dialogue based on what they see. This can be uh, particularly uh, effective for building descriptive language and creative uh, and encouraging uh, creative expression. So in my example here, you know, uh, we have a teacher and we have seven students sitting uh, on the grass in the forest. And the question you want to ask your students is this, what are they talking about, right? Then you can put your students into teams. So in my example here, we have seven students and a teacher, which means I would divide my class into uh, groups of seven students each, oh, sorry, eight students each, one teacher, here and seven students. But of course, if you have a smaller class, you can find a different template, a different picture, a uh, role play picture with um, fewer students, fewer characters there, right? And then, then you can, uh, like, uh, for example, in my case, the teacher asks, do you have any questions for me, children? And then you give them some time to come up with as many answers as they want. So in my case, it could be, what are we doing in the forest, Miss Strange? Uh, what's on her head? Shut up, Jane, I don't wanna get into trouble. I wonder if there are snakes in this grass. Miss Strange, Miss Strange, where is the toilet? Ha 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 ha, John said toilet. Everywhere, bro, everywhere is the toilet. We're in the forest. I mean, <laughs> uh, you, your students are gonna surprise you with this, with the, with, with, with the responses, really. But it's a very creative exercise, and when they're done with it, they can role play in front of the class. It's a lot of fun. So you need to, of course, 
Of course, you need to prepare a template to give them a template. But since we have groups, it's not too uh, many sheets of paper, not too many pieces of paper. And uh, you can uh, do it similar to what I have here. So they can write down um, their ideas, their responses, their questions in those uh, speech bubbles. Uh, another good idea is to make a storyboard. So storyboards are great when you finish the lesson, especially if you teach storybooks and uh, storyboards summarize the lesson. Um, take a look at a few examples. This is what the, the students in grade four made. These are their storyboards or story maps as we call them. So play a recorded dialogue or use a scripted dialogue. Have students listen to it and then respond with their own um, version, either by recreating the conversation or imagining what might happen next. This develops listening skills and the ability to formulate appropriate responses. So here I have a dialogue pre-recorded Again, you can, I'm not going to play it just to save time. You get the idea, but um, it's sort of a listening exercise. Yeah, it can be any dialogue and then they listen to it and they uh, do the task. They either recreate it or um, do their own version. It doesn't really matter because the goal of this exercise is to make them speak. That's all that matters. So uh, take a dialogue and ask students to change the context. For instance, if the original dialogue is about meeting a friend, uh, have students adapt it to a business meeting. Yeah, so this helps uh, reinforce language flexibility and adaptability. So uh, in my example here, we are going to go from rude to polite. So you can always uh, you can tell your students that in English language questions always sound more polite than plain sentences. So can I have a pencil, please? Sounds more polite than give me a pencil. And you can uh, give them a few examples here. So they need to change the sentences uh, to the polite one. So for example, I want water. Yeah, you can have a discussion in class. What sounds more polite than I want water? And hopefully you're gonna get something like, can I have a glass of water, please? Go away. What is more polite? I think, can we talk later, please, is more polite than this one, yeah? Or shut up. <laughs> what is more polite than shut up? I think pretty much anything is more polite than shut up. So can you be quiet, please, is more polite than shut up. And what do you want would be how may I help you, yeah? All right. Now we have dialogue practice yeah so uh your students need to work in pairs and they need to create two dialogues one uh rude dialogue and one polite dialogue and then you uh, need to ask them to act it out in front of the class ask them encourage them to use magic words here they are and give them an example. Here's an example of a rude dialogue. Hey, you, give me your stupid ball now. No, I don't play with bullies. John is very rude. He's a bully and we don't play with bullies. And here's uh, a polite dialogue. Hi, can I play with your football, please? We can play together if you like. No problem, here you are. Thank you. You are very welcome. Tom is very polite. He is kind and friendly. Yeah? Okay. Now, uh, we can change uh, from informal to formal, right? 
So for example, this is Mr. Informal and he says, call me if you need help. And this is Ms. Formal who likes to talk formally. And then she's going to show you how you can change this sentence into this one. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you require any assistance. Um, here it's a good idea to talk how simple words like help or need can be uh, converted or turned into uh, more uh, fancy, fancy version of these words. Help turns into help becomes assistance and need becomes require. It's a fancier form of it's a fancier word, pretty much. All right. And here we go. So here we have a simple dialogue meeting a friend and we can say it all together. Hey, how is it going? Not bad. Thanks. You I'm good. Grab lunch yet. No, I was just about to. Do you want to join? And then you ask your students to adapt this dialogue for a business meeting. Yeah, you can put them into pairs, into groups, whatever works, and they work on that. So here's an example, meeting a colleague at work. Yeah, there are two ways you can do it uh, in. So one, you can give them a sentence starters or you can give them like, uh, something to work with. Yeah. So for example, this gentleman says, good morning. It's great to see you. How have you been? And here they need to come up with the answer. So in my case, it's, I've been very well. Thank you. Any updates on our project? Yes, we're making a good progress. I'll share the details in our meeting. Sounds good. Looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, so this is way number one, the easy one. Uh, and if you want to make it more challenging, you like they would need to create everything from scratch. Start a story with a sentence or two and then have students um, take turns adding to it in a round robin uh, fashion, building a um, story through dialogue. So um, I have an example here. I don't think I can play it or YouTube is going to uh, block this video. So um, uh, here I have like a couple of stand up comedians who uh, have a skit but they can only speak one word at a time yeah it sounds really funny and uh, again it's just an idea that uh, you can probably incorporate in uh, your class yeah so it goes something like my name is john and i am bold so i need more hair <laughs> I think you get the idea. You get the idea. Students um, can reenact their favorite scenes from English movies, which will help them understand the usage of uh, colloquial language and idioms. So in my example here, I have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, I'm not sure if I can show you the part of the movie, but yeah, you show, you show part of the movie with the subtitles and um, Students watch it and then they answer questions. So let me see. <laughs> I think that's enough. And then, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, of course, the part of the movie you're going to show it to your students should be longer. But again, I am cutting it short because of uh, YouTube algorithm. I don't want this video to be blocked. So uh, and then, yeah, you have questions. You know, you invite uh, students from each team to answer. What color is Gamora? Yeah. And then you show the answer. What color are Ronan's uh, eyes? purple yeah what is star lord doing and so on uh you can first you do it you know sentence by sentence uh, sorry question by question they can you can list all the questions on the board or on your ppt slide powerpoint slide 
and then your students can practice this dialogue or they can again reenact what they saw uh, in the movie in the scene using their own words Divide a longer dialogue into segments and distribute different segments to pairs or small groups. Uh, students must work together to reconstruct the complete dialogue by sharing their segments. So, and also you always show them uh, the, the, the first question or the first part of the first segment and they need to put it in the correct order. Can I have some juice, please? With juice, orange juice or apple juice. Orange juice, please. Here you are. Then you can display it in the correct way and get your uh, students to practice it in pairs. Well, I think it's obvious. Uh, students work in pairs and practice specific dialogues provided by the teacher. So you show them the dialogue. Always model it first. So I suggest you pre-record it or uh, you can use different voices, yeah? Or you can just read it out in class and then your students practice it in pairs. Another idea which I really like in my classes, this is what I do sometimes uh, as a lesson closure, is what do you remember? So uh, it's, uh, it works really well with, uh, with, with stories and storybooks. So we just go together with the questions. Uh, we go together as a class. So I ask, what is the title of the story? And usually the strong students raise their hands and they say, you know, so for example, the title of the story is Antarctica. And this is good for the weak students because they can listen, listen first. You know, there's no pressure for them. And then you go through all these questions together with your students, like so. So let me do it quicker. All these questions you ask and then you ask, uh, you invite whoever raises the hand to answer the question. And then you list all the questions here and now you give uh, the whole class some time to practice it in pairs, answering all these questions, yeah? So uh, this way, for example, like the, the, the weak students feel more confident uh, to, to, to participate in this activity. And you can finish with your lesson with a lesson review, yeah? So review this lesson, use the sentences and questions to help you. So here, here uh, you give them, you know, like sentence starters or the structure of what they need to say and always give an example. I am going to play it uh, here so you all can listen. Uh, this is actually from one of my lessons. Uh, you can find these lessons uh, uh, in one of my stores. One is in Shopify and one is um, on Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm going to leave all the links in the description below the video. So let's take a look. Hello, my name is Val and I would like to tell you what we learned today. We read a book about Antarctica. Antarctica is a continent with the ocean all around it. It is a very cold and windy place. Antarctica is a desert because it doesn't snow or rain much here. Emperor penguins only live in Antarctica. People don't live here because it is too cold to live in. I like this lesson because I learned something new about the world. I give it five stars. So dialogues are based on questions, right? So teacher students 
uh, make questions from uh, a sentence using the five W questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. So in my example here, um, I have, well, I have a sentence. I want to eat noodles because I'm hungry, right? So um, first I, I corresponds to who, right? And the question here would be who wants to eat? And the answer is, I want to eat noodles. Next one is eat. Eat corresponds to what? The question here would be, what do you want to do? I want to eat. Yeah. Next one, noodles corresponds to what? The question would be, what do you want to eat? I want to eat noodles. And finally, why? Why do you want to eat? I want to eat because I am hungry and now uh after you've demonstrated modeled everything to the students you can do it together so they can choose the color or the word and then uh, make a question so for example if i click on who they would say they would need to create this dialogue recreate this dialogue who wants to eat john wants to eat yeah and let's try this one why why do you want to eat? I want to eat because I am hungry. Engage students in debates or discussions on various topics. This not only helps with spoken English, but also encourages critical thinking and argumentation skills. Here's an example of a discussion game called BMI. In this game, uh, students have to think of the plus points, minus points, and interesting points of an idea. I give the class an idea, I put them into groups, and let them work together on their thoughts, on their own ideas for a few minutes. I may say something like this. Government bans education. Plus point. Learning gets more creative. It could make us find new, more interesting or more creative ways to learn outside regular school. Minus point. Everything stops growing. No school means no education. No school means we stop growing smarter together. It's going to mess up uh, new ideas, new jobs. It's going to mess up everything. We are going to become dumb. Interesting fact. Secret schools pop up. Underground learning. History shows when schools get banned, people always find a way to learn new stuff. Because I think it's in our nature to learn new things and keep learning. So if a school get, if schools get banned, I think underground learning, secret schools are going to pop up everywhere. Or you can say something like this. Boys are only allowed to wear blue clothes and girls are only allowed to wear pink clothes. Go. Plus point, easy outfit choices. Make picking what to wear super simple. You don't need to think, just pick whatever you have in your closet. You can get ready fast. Minus point, gender stereotypes. It's like saying that certain people can like certain things, which is not cool or not fair. Um, it limits our freedom and it limits our creative or individual expression. Interesting fact. Uh, color swap history. This thing, this is the whole thing, you know, blue for boys, pink for girls, hasn't always been around. It's a relatively new concept. And it just shows how quickly things change in this world. One day is one thing, one day is something entirely different. I think it's interesting. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now you tell me, how do you practice dialogue in your class? What works best for you? What doesn't? Let me know in the comments below.